Now as you can see here, I've made a makeshift stand to hold the pendant. I have a third arm used here and I've threaded it back slightly so that you see that it holds it but the pendant actually has a little plane. In other words, gravity will want to force the, the pin down, the loop down. What I'm going to do is I'll move, I'm going to flux this area here and all around here at the bottom of the pendant. Take one large piece of solder put it here about an eighth of an inch by sixteenth. When I put heat to this I'm going to heat the main part of the plug first and as it becomes hot then I'll go ahead and start to heat this. The idea is to heat the area so that the solder will flow onto the loop first. As soon as it does, as soon as it evaporates, I'll pull the heat down onto the main part of the pendant and then it'll actually draw the heat, it'll actually draw the solder down and once I've got the solder joint made onto the main pendant I'll remove the heat and the joint will be made. What I'm looking for is that everything is lined up nice and square. This here being in the center and so that when I set, when I pull this back and set it on there that the pendant will be basically so that when I pull this on there and set it on there, the, the two parts will come together. This in orientation to the main part will be correct. And the next thing to do is to go ahead and put the flux on it and put the heat to it. Now I have the piece ready to go. I have looked alignment this way over the top from behind and I have it set just like I want. Now what I'll do is I'm going to, you can leave this to dry. Uh, it will probably take about 24 hours. A faster way to do it though would be to take any old hair dryer you have laying around, turn it on, and dry the thing out. You'll find this will take uh, 15, 20 seconds and it will actually completely dry the thing out. You want it nice and dry. You'll see a slight color change in the, in the foot and you want it completely dry. Not having the flux completely dry will allow the water still left in the flux to turn into steam and steam evaporating from underneath the solder or any part here will blow the thing apart. So you must have this solder completely dry prior to proceeding. And now we're going to go ahead and dry this completely out. And that's good. Okay, we're back at our oxyacetylene tanks. I'm going to go ahead and turn them on. One of the things you might want to know about oxyacetylene tanks is when you turn them on, you don't need to turn them on all the way. If there's ever a problem, you'll want the ability to uh, turn them off right away. And uh, that way if they're on just a little bit, it doesn't take much to turn them back off. And as you can see here, I'm running 5 and 20. Uh, when actual flow is going through the line, these pressures will drop. It will end up being about 2 and 10. Generally you want to run 1 to 5 for oxyacetylene. 5 parts oxygen for 1 part gas.